All righty. Welcome, everybody, to HEAL in O2 Utah's writing workshop for public comments and letters to editors for the building code updates coming up next week, August 10th at the Uniform Building Code Commission. I'm really excited to have everybody, everybody here and to learn a little bit about the updating these building codes as well as um, get some tips and tricks on how to write a public comment, uh, what a public comment is, what's going on with public comment, who can public comment, all that good stuff, and then how you can turn your public comment into a letter to editor and get published in a local newspaper. Um, just to give you a little bit of a rundown of how this is going to go. So we're going to have Eliza, Eliza Cowie from O2 Utah, go up first and give a brief presentation on a issue overview of the actual building code, just so everybody kind of knows what we're talking about and what's going on. And then after that, I'll be following up with um, just a brief overview of how public comments work how you can write the most effective public comment, and then how you can turn that public comment into a letter to editor. So with that, I am going to get Eliza's presentation up here and let her have a go on the sustainable building codes. Let's see here, where is that? Awesome, thanks Alex. Um, hi everyone. So excited to have you guys here. Um, really excited to share this with you all. Um, we are really excited because um, this meeting marks a really important milestone in getting public comment related to the building codes um, happening. So um, let me see. Um, okay, sorry, brief technical difficulties on my end. Um, so we are going to talk about today updating our residential building code sustainably. Um, let me just, sorry. Um, okay, so what are the 2021 IECC building codes? Um, these codes are set by the International Energy Conservation Code. Um, it's actually a federal program that 48 states in the country use as their baseline for adopting um, energy codes. And they set the minimum requirement for energy efficient buildings um, and are adopted by each state. So every six years, our residential building codes are updated and our commercial building codes are updated every three years. Um, the 2021 IECC addresses energy efficiency on several fronts, including, including costs, energy usage, use of natural resources, and the impact of energy usage on the environment. Um, currently, um, the IECC is the standard, like I said, for 48 states, excluding Indiana and California. Um, California uses what they call the Title 24, and Indiana uses the ASHRAE 90.1 standards. Um, but basically, these standards all set the precedent for how we address our buildings. Um, so what is updated currently in the 2021 IECC is the wall insulation, ceiling insulation, window efficiency, efficient lighting, lighting controls, home, whole home air tightness, air duct tightness, um, energy efficiency package options, and then volunteer net zero appendix. Um, and while I know everybody would love to sit through um, the regular meetings that are set by the Mechanical Advisory Council, um, we have done that for you and done the legwork. So now we can go straight forward and uh, actually advocate for what is being proposed in Utah. Um, so while the Utah uses the IECC set standards, the adoption of these specific segments is at the discretion of the state legislature based on recommendations by the Utah Building Code Commission. Um, I know it's pretty easy when we start talking about policy to get really into like UVCC, IECC, um, those kind of terms, but if for some reason I drop into that throughout this presentation, I will try to correct myself. And if you have a question, please feel free to hop on the mic um, and ask it because I definitely want to get everything covered. Um, so to kind of give the rundown of our timeline and, and what's going on, um, we are currently in the review and advised um, portion of this where the Uniform Building Code Commission on August 10th will um, take in public comment 
They will then decide what they will be recommending to the legislature. And then in September, they'll be sending that over to the Utah legislature um, for voting. And then the legislature will vote um, and decide on what the next six years of our residential building codes look like. Um, we know that the 2021 updated code is almost 17% more efficient than the current standards. And we know that buildings are really important in dealing with our air quality issue and our climate issue. Um, and so taking this opportunity to engage with the Uniform Building Code um, Commission is really important. Uh, next slide. Okay, so, oh, can you back up a couple to why is it important? Oh, I think it's just going forward. That's okay. Um, okay, so timeline, like I said, um, June, so August 10th, we have this big vote. And then in September, they're going to set through their recommendations. So why is this important? Why do we want to have um, to go forward with this? We know that Utah is growing um, as our, is, is our demand for new buildings and homes. In the last 10 years, Utah has grown 18% and is expected to continue to grow to nearly 66% within the next 40 years, while residents per home will decrease. Currently, it's like three people per home, it'll go to two and a half. So actually, the demand for homes and buildings is going to be uh, dramatically more even compared to the rise in humans who are moving to our state. Um, Utah is currently, um, so we also will be seeing that our uh, individual cost savings for this adoption is really important. Um, we're really excited to see that the 2021 IECC will have on average $325 saved um, throughout the state. So they split the state into three climate zones, the southern part of the state, the northern part of the state, and then where we are. Um, and so for us, that 5B line in, in this is a $332 in the first year savings. Um, and if you really want to understand how that gets broken down, we have this chart next to it that breaks down heating, cooling, water heating, lighting, fans. Um, yeah, so we will also be seeing um, the energy burdens for consumers to be lower and this resulting in less emissions from our building sector. Buildings are set to be one of the largest emission uh, producers in our state. Currently, transportation is the highest, but with technology advances, homes and buildings will um, take over that from um, uh, the transportation sector. We also will see a dramatic rise in job creation um, from this. So in the first year, we'll see 118 new jobs. Um, and we will see both, this is for both um, direct jobs created from buildings, as well as the cost saved, the cost saved from um, having more money in your pocket, being able to put towards that economy like every other industry in America. Um, yes, air quality improvements. So as I said, buildings are one of the top contributors to Utah's air quality issues, accounting for almost 30% of our uh, greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so while the incentives and markets continue to push our transportation industry to become more energy efficient, we haven't really seen that with our buildings. We are using codes based in 2015 that had a lot of adoption in codes from 2009 because we only took in parts of that 2015 um, code. And so right now we have this really important moment where we can decide not only what does the next six years look like for our buildings, but also what does the next 50 years look like for our buildings? Because that's the average lifespan of a building and a home in across the country. Um, so that will have a huge, huge impact. Next slide. Yeah, so this will just shows um, kind of that breakdown of emissions reduction. Um, so when we get to the next portion where you guys will be um, building out your arguments, these are really great um, factors to have in and we'll send along this document with um, all of this breakdown so you can have that at the ready and be able to um, put that towards your um, advocacy.
Okay, so how can we hold our decision makers accountable? We can do direct outreach. So meeting with, with your local legislator, um, attending meetings at the Capitol or virtual meetings. Um, you can write letters to the editor. You can testify during the legislative session, um, during committee hearings, and then you can provide public comment. Um, um, and so tonight, I'm really excited because Alex Bay, you will be um, speaking to you all on how to create that public comment that really provides the, um, le the base layer for all other ways that you communicate with your elected officials. Um, and so, yeah, I'll turn it over to Alex. Awesome. Thanks so much for that presentation, Eliza. That, that was a fantastic overview of the issue and glad that everybody on here can Get a, get a brief primer on what we're looking at for the updating of the uh, IECC 2021 residential code there and what we're ultimately looking to be giving comment on and affecting change on to make sure that all new builds in Utah are going to be built in the most sustainable way possible. Um, so next up, I'm gonna just be following up with how Eliza ended her last slides there with how you can directly affect change and how you can directly influence lawmakers to adopt the most sustainable building codes possible. Um, so let's see here, we got the slide deck. Sorry team, I'm just hopping on to share a screen. No worries, take your time. Can you guys see it? It's not showing up on mine. Uh, it says that you're screen sharing. Are you guys all seeing the presentation? I can't see the presentation. It just says that you have started screen sharing. Oh, there, there we go. go. Perfect. <laughs> Sorry, technical difficulties on my end. <laughs> yeah, we, we usually have our um, handy dandy communications director directing this, but he was busy this evening, so we're doing our best. Uh, but yeah, so I, like I said, I'm going to go through um, how, do you, how to write a public comment, uh, effective tips for writing a public comment, um, how you can turn your public comment into a letter to editor. So just an overview of what we're about to go over, you know, what, what are public comments, we'll go over that really quick, why public comments are important, uh, who can submit a public comment. Like I said, we're going to give some tips on writing public comments. And then in the end, we're just going to talk about how you can turn your public comment into a letter to editor and, uh, you know, become a, become a published journalist. And uh, we were just chatting before this meeting, actually, and Tim Fitzpatrick, um, the previous editor and, and, and current journalist at the Salt Lake Trip, was, was talking about this exact issue very recently. So if you end up writing a letter to editor, there's a very good chance you'd be getting it published in the Salt Lake Trip in this upcoming week. So that's really exciting. Uh, Eliza, if you want to go to the next slide, please. So what is a public comment? Okay, so a public comment, um, it's a statement to federal, state, or local agencies uh, providing relevant feedback to a proposed rule or regulation. Um, not all decisions require public comment, but most will require public comment period by law. Uh, comments can be submitted either virtually or in print uh, as a written format, or can be submitted in person as a spoken statement at a public hearing, like this upcoming uh, Uniform Building Code Commission on August 10th. Um, you don't have to be an expert on the issue and can provide public comment on specific aspects of the regulation or address it as a whole. Um, so, you know, um, don't feel like you have to be like some specialist to come up and, and testify. We're, those decision makers are looking to hear from concerned citizens and their own personal stories, and that's really where you come in. Uh, next slide, Eliza. So, um, if you feel like it, go ahead and unmute, and I'm just going to open it up to the audience. Uh, why should you give public comment? Why do you think that's important? Who, who's got a good answer of why a public comment is a, is a good idea and, and why we need to be giving public comment? Um, it shows people care about what they're doing. Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 it just... It shows that the public cares, that the public's coming together. And that's a really great answer, Joan. Um, it's the, the more that we can show that the public cares about something, you know, ultimately these lawmakers and decision makers are held accountable by us. You know, we're the ones voting for them. We're the ones that putting them in office. They have to listen to them. Yes, we're their boss you know, under, under a democracy like our own. So it's really important that a lot of people show up. And if they see that a lot of people are concerned about this issue, you know, it very well could sway the top of what's going on over there. So great answer, Joan, that, that's a really great point. 
Um, let's see if you could just go to the next slide. We'll kind of go more into that. So yeah, here's a, here's a couple great great examples of of why your public comments are important. So yeah, you can you can show influence. You know, commenting is an opportunity to influence or change the rule or regulation and make your voice heard. Uh, regulations that require public comment hearings are required to consider your comments before making final decisions. Like I said. Um, you know, not only is, is, is showing that people care important, but it can show a unique perspective. People can come out and they wouldn't have heard this perspective without you being there. So commenting ensures that on the ground experiences are taken into, into account. Uh, you may be personally affected by this issue. You may have a personal story about this issue or, or work with people that are affected by this issue. So it's very important that we get everybody out and get a, a broad range of voices on this to share perspectives that wouldn't have been heard by lawmakers. Um, your comments can be a fact check. Um, you know, comment periods allow for better regulations. Um, you can provide a perspective, like I said, that's ensuring that a fact or an unintended consequence or an error aren't overlooked. Um, you know, these, these lawmakers and decision makers are only human and we need to be the watchdogs and fact checkers for them. So if there is something that's flawed and they're kind of overlooking and, and is, is wrong, we need to be there um, pointing that out for them. Um, we need to provide that comment for them. Um, and then your, your, your comments can offer alternatives. So commenting is your opportunity to point out issues, uh, offer alternatives and substitute language and help decision makers identify solutions they may not have considered initially. Um, so just moving on here. So yeah, who, who can submit comment? You know, a lot of times people think, hey, I'm just some normal person. They don't wanna listen to me. What am I doing up there? I, that, that doesn't make any sense. Why would I be giving public comment? So really, anybody can give public comment. You don't need to have these special comment qualifications. I mean, it's great. We definitely get folks who have special qualifications to be giving comment. And there will be folks at this next meeting on August 10th with great qualifications. We'll all be giving comment who are on this meeting, me, Eliza, um, folks from other nonprofit organizations. But, you know, we really want to make sure that this personal storytelling is happening and decision makers are hearing these on the ground stories and um, really personalized accounts of why people should care about this stuff. And you can make your voice heard. Everybody should be making their voice heard. We, we live in a democracy and that should be how it's going. Um, let's see here. So yeah, we've got some tips here for effective comments. So I've got a bunch of stuff kind of laid out here. Um, I will be dropping in the chat a toolkit that we put together for all you folks. So um, it's going to have all this stuff on here. So don't worry too much about taking really detailed notes. We'll be sending around the slide deck and we've got a whole toolkit all built out for you folks to help build comments. But just kind of running down the running, running down the uh, items here. So, um, yeah, you know, be, get straight to the point. Um, it's best to prepare a comment that is clear and concise as possible. Um, you know, you don't want to kind of ramble on and, and some comments do have time constraints. Um, you know, this one doesn't have a time constraint, but we recommend a limit of two minutes. So that's an estimated 300 words. You can almost think of 150 words per minute for a public comment. So you really want to be impactful and punchy and just really get straight to the point there. Uh, make sure you're uh, researching data points and relevant facts to build credibility. Um, the more facts you kind of have, the more likely you'll be taken into consideration. So, you know, in, we, we have a bunch of facts that are built into that toolkit that we have for you folks. Um, so really uh, just, just research off of that toolkit and fact sheet that we're going to be distributing to you folks and kind of sprinkle in there to support your concerns. Um, present your argument and make sure you support it with a data point. Uh, like we said, just we're going to provide that fact sheet for you. Uh, most importantly here, just make it personal. Um, while facts are a great foundation, uh, decision makers need to know why this is important for you and your community. Um, that's really what the whole grassroots aspect of this is. That's what Heal really works really hard to do is to lift up community voices and make sure that voices are heard. Um, paint a story, talk about why this issue is personal to you, why you care about air quality and our Wasatch Front, why you care about climate change and greenhouse gas emissions, why you want to electrify your own home you know kind of give that personal account to folks and um really just 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 tell a story and um you know maybe you can appeal to their emotion there um do a draw from your expertise and experiences uh don't feel shy if you do have like credentials um drop those you know that that could definitely help uh this is only going to build your credibility uh, it's important to note that we don't only refer to science and academic professionals expertise, you know, you, you could just be someone who's already taken steps to electrify your own home, or maybe you're an expert on building insulation, you can speak to energy efficiency, or, you know, maybe you've just been talking about it in your community and there's, you can talk about how a lot of people care that you've been talking about recently. 
Um, make sure that you're, you're citing your sources. Again, in that fact sheet, we'll have citations for you. So just a quick little, according to blank, our air quality is blank. Um, that really just strengthens your argument and that will make sure to be the most effective version of your argument. And uh, lastly, and almost most importantly, uh, just, just get writing, you know, just get your thoughts on paper, just start writing, get it all out. Um, you can always edit and refine your argument later, but there's been so many times where like, I've kind of pushed it off, pushed it off. If I just sit down and start writing, like it's in a journal, like I just have it in front of me and then it's ready to go. You know, it's easier to kind of refine and add on to something that exists as opposed to like kind of procrastinating and putting it off. So always just recommend to just, just start, just start going. After you go to the next slide, Eliza. Okay, so we have got a sample comment here. Um, so this is just a, a really good example of, of something that a public comment could look like. Um, so just, I'm just going to kind of read through this and kind of just talk, talk my way through it as we're looking at it. So, you know, start off, hello, my name is Alex Bayou. I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm a member of Heal Utah. If you've got an organization or maybe you can just kind of state like, hey, I'm a teacher or I'm a, I'm a concerned homeowner or I'm uh, looking to build a new home. Kind of just state what your purpose is, where you're coming from and uh, why you're out here today. Um, just, you know, letting people who know who you are, what your comments main argument is, include your expertise um, and other relevant information. So moving on from there. Uh, as our state continues to grow in population, we will need to ensure that future developments are being planned out with the most up-to-date sustainability and energy efficiency standards. Currently, the main contributor to our air quality issues in population areas is linked to vehicle source emissions, but is expected to change to area source emissions, including future buildings and commercial developments. Um, so yeah, just kind of tell that personal story, include some key facts. Uh, by adopting the 2021 International Energy Conservation Code, the Uniform Building Code Commission will take preventative measures to lower emissions from the building sector, reduce energy burdens for consumers, and lower yearly utility bills. I urge you to go forward with the adoption of the IECC Building Code. So yeah, once you've established who you are and what your comment's about, you can start working on that personal story, the data points, um, on why your argument is valid and then reinstate what you want the decision maker to do. Um, it's either approving or disapproving something at, at this point where we're urging them to adopt those building codes. Um, you know, you could be amending a code section or alternative solutions. So yeah, that's what we're looking to do today. And uh, you know, that's, that's gonna be included in that toolkit that we send out to you. So you'll have something handy dandy to rely on and look at when you're going into building your own comment. Um, so next slide. So yeah, um, once you have that public comment written, um, it's really, really easy to turn that comment into a letter to editor. Um, so newspapers, they publish short form 100 to 200 word submissions from community voices in print and digital. So, you know, if you're around 300 words for a public comment, that can be easily converted into a letter to editor. Um, you know, they're really important, you know, for getting the word out and kind of, you know, obviously uh, regular newspaper readers are going to be seeing that and they're engaged citizens if they're reading the newspaper every day. But it's almost more important as an essential tool to share with these key decision makers or, or stakeholders. Um, so you can kind of use it as a lobbying tool later on. Like if you're emailing your city councilman or you're emailing someone on the uniform building code to follow up, code commission to follow up, follow up, you can have this letter to editor ready and just link it right into that lobbying email and just say, hey, look at this thing that was published most recently about those building codes. Let's check this out. Let's, it's, just, it's just a really easy way to both lobby and get the word out in a letter to editor. Uh, next slide, Eliza. So uh, this again is gonna be included in your toolkit that I'm about to drop in the chat here. So it's just, like I said, you know, it's, it's about 300 words for a two minute uh, public comment. So if you look at the word limits there, it pretty much lines up with it. You know, the park record is 300 words flat. Um, you could just hone down a couple words off of your stuff to get it in the trib or, or get it in dessert news. Um, so it's really easy to just transform these public comments into a letter to editor. So not only can you stand up and make your voice heard at a public comment period or a hearing, um, you could get famous. You could be in the newspaper. Why not? You know, might as well. Um, next slide, Eliza. So uh, we are just going to take a little bit of time and I'm sitting outside and the sun is setting and I'm really sorry if I look really evil and 
and weird. <laughs> I'm gonna stop my video and go inside. I'm I'm at my parents' house on the East Coast, so I'm gonna, oh, I was yeah. happy about that. Yeah, yeah. So it was a really beautiful sunset while I was at. The house is really small, so I'm gonna um, just pause the video really quick. But I'm gonna be listening to you guys, and I'm, I'm gonna just. How about we do like a quick go around to start off? just to kind of introduce yourself. I should have done this at the beginning realistically, but introduce yourself and kind of say why you care about these building codes and why you're here and you want to give public comment and learn how to give a, write a letter to editor about building codes. And I'm going to go inside and find a light bulb that's electric. And Alex, you're doing great. <laughs> um, Joan, do you want to start? Okay, um, so just pretend that I'm making a public comment. Is that what it is? Okay. Well, let's just go around first and just say your name, um, where you're tuning in from, and kind of how you heard about this or why you care about building electrification. Or okay, so um, yeah, so I probably, uh, my name is Joan Entwistle, uh, pronouns she, her, I'm in the land of the Eastern Shoshone and Utes. Um, so um, I heard about it, I think, from the Utah Clean Energy newsletter that I happened to open last week. Um, and I'm interested in building codes. I'm from Massachusetts. I moved here three years ago. And so I did a little bit of work with um, the, um, the residential building codes and um, groups that were trying to get, um, you know, people onto the state, onto the board, onto the state voting group that um, from each town. So we went around to different towns and got recruited people to be voters, you know, um, um, voters for good building codes. So it, obviously the building association holds, you know, so it, it they they did it's like the, they have the most sway so but it was it was an interesting learning experience um and you know so it's something i'm interested in um so so that's me awesome um nathan and Brittany. hey Yes, um, sorry, I'm dealing with a similar lighting issue, but too much light. No, um, and end of the day, Zoom call, this is yeah. what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, um, so yeah, we, I, my family is just concerned about uh, the ozone issues in the Wasatch Front, and so anything we can do to offset that getting worse, um, I mean, at the very least, we should improving it, but uh, it sounds like with the potential additional humans occupying this area, it would be more problematic. So hopefully offsetting that. Yeah, awesome. That's it. Um, let's see, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, yeah, so I'm Jeff Kraus. Uh, I live over here in Midvale and um, I've been in Utah for about two years now. And to, to be fair, uh, I... Uh, I just really care about the environment and, you know, just for sustainability uh, as a whole. And uh, I keep talking, I keep talking to my wife uh, for the last couple of years about, uh, you know, how much I care about it, but I haven't really been doing anything. So uh, quite recently I went out and uh, just kind of did some research, found uh, Heal Utah and just saw that this was, this was happening tonight. So I, I won't lie. I I've learned a lot in a very short amount, you know, last, uh, what, 30 minutes here about just, you know, building codes and such. I didn't really know too much, but I'm just, uh, I care a lot about, you know, uh, just the environment at large. So I want to uh, just, that's why I'm here. And <laughs> so. Perfect. And Marilyn? Yeah, my name is Marilyn Marshall and I'm in Magna right now. And, um, I've been in Utah for about 24 years. So um, I actually attended the um, Salt Lake Tribune um, electrification uh, community conversation, they called it, that had Rocky Mountain Power there. And I heard about you guys from your last um, webinar that had, I think it had um, UCE on it too, plus, plus you. <laughs> 
Eliza and um, and also heal. And so I thought I'd um, just tune in. I actually owned several uh, historical buildings here out in Magna. So I was hoping to learn more about retrofitting for environmental reasons, because um, that these codes are for new buildings from what I understand. Correct. And um, actually I toured um, Architectural Nexus too, which is one of the living buildings, very fascinating. Um, so yeah, I was hoping to learn more about retrofitting and I, I actually sent off a letter to the editor um, just today about the meeting yesterday. So um, I've been published a couple of times in the Salt Lake Tribune. So um, that's very good advice about trying to keep it precise and short in a specific issue. I like that. Yeah. Can you, can you share that in case it doesn't get published? <laughs> I, I'm very interested in your comments. On oh, they, they probably about half a dozen things from me. They probably go, oh my God, is she writing again? <laughs> <laughs> and what we can do um, uh, is we can start like a email chain since we're a smaller group tonight and we can yeah. I think it'd be great you know I I want to take time and, and have you guys kind of bullet down um what we have on the screen here of who you are and your experience and expertise why it matters to you the facts you want to highlight and what your argument is um but once you get those actually drafted into you know public comment form or you know notes for the public comment or the 200 word limit letter to the editor, like feel free to share those around with each other. And I think that could really provide a, an awesome background. And we're really lucky tonight because we also have Thomas Kessinger here, who was on the previous um, event that we did from Utah Clean Energy. And he is the expert on the policy side and, and the building code side of all of this. So Thomas, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for hosting this event, HEAL and O2. Um, it's nice to hear from everyone. I guess, yeah, first, my name is Thomas Kessinger. I work for an organization called Utah Clean Energy, and I am their beneficial electrification program manager, which means that it's my job to promote electrification of our built environment and our transportation sector. And a key piece of that is making sure that our buildings are as efficient as possible so that when we want to switch to electrification, um, it is cost effective. So. It is fantastic to hear hear from everyone this evening. Um, and yeah, I'm here to answer some questions. Um, it'd be great to hear a couple folks give give this a dry run and yeah, just kind of hear um, hear what's on your mind in terms of public comments. And and I believe it was Marilyn, um, if we've got time at the end um, or perhaps we can do it offline, um, I'd be happy to talk to you about your, your buildings and, and the retrofits. Oh, I would love to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> Even my residential, this is residential. The buildings I owned were commercial, which is a whole nother animal, but we'll talk about that. Okay. And yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a really good point, Marilyn. That, um, and that's something that feels going to be looking into in the future that we do realize this is like a holistic issue um, and we do need to be focused on retrofits as well. Um, just the nexus point we're at right now is with these new building codes, but, but stay tuned. Um, we're all going to be working on all buildings, you know, so very good point. And hopefully everyone can see me better now. Hi. Hello. 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 Um, and we just had Mary join us as well. This is very exciting. Um, Mary, you're joining us at the perfect time because we're going to practice providing our public comment. Um, and, um, you know, we're excited about the building code updates. Um, and if you want, we will be sending around notes um, as well as this recording that kind of gave the background. But um, for the meantime, if everyone wants to just take a second and write down kind of uh, these bullet points that we have on here of just, you know, why you care about the issue um, and, uh, you know, any facts that you had heard from from the presentation before, but mostly just developing that story, personal storyline. I think that's what we found really resonates with elected officials and and members of these boards. They hear facts and figures all the time, and facts and figures are really important. But what really solidifies in their brain is, you know, the fact that you want to be able to, you know, build live in a house that provides. Um, you know, no emissions into our air quality because you have asthma or, you know, that's just an example, but 
these really personal stories are kind of what bring people together um, and remind them that this issue is important, not just on a holistic state level front, but on, the, on a very individual personal front as well. Um, and if anyone has those points, just feel free to hop on and share them. Yeah, and we can give you some time to kind of think about that type of stuff too. Um, you know, yeah. Max, like if, if we were in person, and hopefully we'll be doing in-person stuff soon, like we kind of break off into working groups, but it's kind of harder on Zoom. But yeah, just take a couple of minutes and just kind of think over those uh, those bullet points there. And then um, if you're feeling comfortable, we can go around and share them and, um, you know, get some cross-pollination and get, get some ideas of where other people's heads are at to help out and, um, yeah, just to uh, to add, I, I jumped in there twice just to make sure that if anybody uh, joined late, I've got our toolkit that we put together for everybody on the public comment for the uh, Building Code Commission in there. So while you're putting these uh, bullet points together, just know that um, that is shared around. So we put that together for all you folks. Um, there's some tips and tricks in there on how to write uh, letters to editor and public comments that um, you know, it, it goes more in depth than a slide deck could cover. Again, we're going to send the slide deck out to everyone and we'll send this toolkit out to everyone in a follow-up email as well. But yeah, it, it kind of just breaks down letters to editor, it breaks down public comments, it breaks down exactly where and when you can provide public comments, if you, whether you want to do it in person at the actual anchor location, if you want to do it over Google Meet for the virtual option, and uh, you know, even if you just want to submit it as a written comment, if you can't make the if you can make the meeting, um, there is an email there that you're going to be able to submit just written comment to, um, as well as of course, as was shared in the slides, just all of the places where you can submit a letter to editor, um, the word limits, the emails that you can send to, um, all of that good stuff is all included in there. And um, and almost most importantly, too, linked in there is our. Uh, we all put together, uh, all, of our, all of our groups here, O2 Utah, uh, Utah Clean Energy, and he'll all put together a fact sheet for you. So there's some, um, you know, if you're talking about, hey, I, this this issue is mostly about uh, ozone or air quality, there is some air quality facts in there that you can put into your public comment. If you're concerned about greenhouse gas emissions and climate, there's some stuff in there about that. If you're concerned about anything at all. And if you can't find anything in there, I know that I'm going to open it up to myself that feel free to email me at alex at healutah.org. Um, I'm, I'm, I love talking about this stuff. I love helping citizen lobbyists and citizen advocates and just working through the process. And that is um, a big part of what HEAL does is, is, is raising voices up from the community and making sure that voices from the community are heard. So I am an open book. I'm happy to give out my personal cell number too. Um, I mean, whenever. This is, this is my lifeblood and my work. And Happy to help out anybody with any questions or concerns that they have past this meeting. So, yeah, be sure to check out that toolkit and, uh, yeah, or, um, and uh, yeah, email me if you like. Um, I'll give everybody just a little bit more time and then um, yeah, I'll stop talking so you can concentrate on these bullet points and then we'll come back together and, and chat a little bit about what everybody thinks about that. So, let's say we'll give it at this point till 8 45. Does that sound good to everybody? 6.45. Or excuse me, I'm in Rhode Island right now. 645. Yeah, not two hours and three minutes. Uh, three minutes, folks. Apologies.
Okay, it is 6.45. Um, go ahead and raise your hand if you feel like you want to go first here. We'll just kind of go down the line for everybody who feels comfortable with sharing. I'll kick it off just to break the ice. Yeah. How about that? And then everyone will feel like they have to do it because someone else did it. <laughs> um, okay, so hi, my name is Eliza Cowie. I'm a Sugar House resident um, who wants to own a home that is both affordable and energy efficient. Um, we know that energy efficient homes save home buyers money and that the 2021 IECC is a cost effective option that provide that saves Utahns an average of $325 a year. I really want, I urge the, uh, you know, the UBCC to adopt the 2021 IECC um, code and would like to see this pass through the legislature. That's what I got. Super. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go, <laughs> unless there are any comments on your, or, or just go. No, um, mine's a little bit off the wall, probably, because I, I'm using my own arguments and perspective here. No, I'm off the wall. <laughs> so, wide range of, of personal experiences, please. I, hi, my name is Joan Entwistle. I live, um, just outside of Park City in Camas, Utah. Uh, I've just lived in Utah for a few years, but I noticed that Salt Lake City um, has pretty bad air pollution and that surprised me. And also it also had in this last month had a record heat day. And last year, July was the hottest um, month on record in Utah. I would so I I think that with this increase in heat, we we really need to be in having better standards for um better building code standards to reduce the amount of air conditioning that's needed. Uh, with the increase in heat and people turning on more air conditioners, there's more pollution. And there's also an increase in the heat island effect in Salt Lake City in neighborhoods that are more dense than, you know, um, that people who live in more dense neighborhoods have to experience. Um, well, in, these new standards will reduce the uh, energy use by almost 17%, which 17% energy to to help keep people cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we're gonna need it because we're getting hotter and we're gonna need more air conditioning. We, we also need to start using more electrical vehicles to reduce the air pollution. So. The electricity that's freed up by these building codes can be available for more EVs and um, for reducing the cost of transmission lines that we otherwise would have to build. So I urge you to support the 2021 uh, codes. Sorry, that was very rough. I'm <laughs> just winging it. That, that was great, and we're, we're doing rough right now. You know, we don't expect it to be polished. Right. You got it down, and, you know, you can work. It, that, that was, I mean, that wasn't rough at all. You could give okay. it, that, that would go. And that's a really, really good point there, that that feedback loop with it getting hotter and, like, we're going to be running these appliances more. I think that's an important point to highlight, and that was really yeah. well said, Joe. Thanks. Thanks yeah, Joan, I really like the way that you connected the efficiency side of things to electrification. And I think it's it's um it's an important two-step. Um, but this idea that we can ease that that peak on the system, right? And ease that stress on the system by increasing efficiency is is a really um yeah. elegant point to make. So I think that was a really great comment. All right, thank you. Um, I'll go ahead. Um again, my name is Marilyn Marshall. And I live in Magna now, but I did live over in the Mill Creek area for 
uh, oh, about 12 years or so. Um, my background is um, I'm a, a retired, but I was a mechanical engineer in aerospace. And I've been looking at this issue for a long time. Um, my house I have now, I have put solar panels on the top. I have a backup battery. Um, I was looking into the EV um, for my next vehicle since I've been driving my compact car since 2006. And um, I found out Utah does not have uh, laws for allowing, um, well, I've talked my husband into a hybrid, but they don't have plug-in hybrids here in Utah, but that's another story. It doesn't have to do with this um, um, code. Um, I've, uh, I'm not comfortable going in person to these meetings at the legislature because I've done that before and it is not a very good experience. So I'm very glad that you guys go and do it because um, I've sat there and they basically, um, it's really sad to think that they learn their information there. They don't do their homework and they wait till the very end for public comment, only give you about two minutes if you're lucky. And um, sometimes some of them actually leave before you even put, listen to the public comment. So. I hate to sound very discouraged, but that we're talking about 15, 20 years ago. So hopefully they're better about listening now. So anyways, I'm glad we have, I call you guys the experts, they're sitting in. I am very happy to write letters to the editor and, and um, do webinars and workshops and, and support where I can. But um, um, again, I'm not comfortable going in front of these legislators because I, just don't feel like they listen. So if you can get them to listen, more power to you. So, Marilyn, um, that's a great point. And just to pop onto there, I'm sorry to cut you off, but we oh, always sorry. want to provide support and want you to do what is the most comfortable. And if that's writing to a let letter to the editor, if that's showing up for public comment, if that's submitting public comment virtually, just any way that you can. Um, be involved in the process and make your voice heard in however you feel comfortable. Um, and if you ever do want to come back up to the, to the Capitol, um, Alex and I are there every day. So we are happy to sit in those meetings with you or to um, help you if you want to testify in front of a committee or something. We'll always provide you know, talking points like the ones Alex provided in the chat and um, make it so it is um, as positive of an experience as possible, um, knowing full well that legislators are human beings with complex emotions and sometimes they can be jerks. So, <laughs> okay, I'm glad you that. said that. <laughs> Um, is there is there a way to do a public comment without like having to be in person and wait and sit there through their committee meetings and all that stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the email for that is just going to be in that toolkit that I sent around. Oh, okay, good. Okay. And yeah, like Eliza said, um, it's always whatever is within your comfort level. Um, we're always here to support you. We're never going to make you do something you don't want to do. Not. Well, let's, yeah, let's just say I've tried it and it, and like I say, I don't want to be discouraging, but, you know, maybe they're better at listening now. Yeah, they, they've they come around. I don't know. Well, I was going to head up there every day and we're, we're talking to them all the time. Thomas is up there a good amount too. And, um, you know, it's it's cyclical. You know, some days I'm discouraged, but I, I, I thrive off of positivity and that's the way that I stay afloat. And, um, you know, for all the times that they're not listening, I feel like there's an equal amount of times that they are listening, luckily enough. Um, but again, it's always what you're comfortable with. And like, you would never, there's definitely, if you don't feel comfortable even just standing up in front of folks, you know, it sounds <laughs> and they like- they probably know you and have respect for your background there. So very good. <laughs> It depends on the people, but you know we're we're working them every way we can, and we're 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 making change. We're doing it. We we are accomplishing things up there. So, uh, stay tuned with you, and stay tuned though to Utah Clean Energy. Like I said, Thomas is up there too. Um, he's an expert. Um, but yeah, I want to. I just want to chime in and say that um, on the 
for the August 10th, who we are talking to is not the legislature yet. We will be talking to the legislature, but we're going to be talking to the Uniform Building Code Commission. And these are individuals who are, you know, they're engineers, they're architects, they're contractors, et cetera. And um, so they're, I would say, a much different audience than legislators. And um, I find it to be a much more uh, human interaction, if you will, um, more down to earth, I guess I should say. And um, they, they're a bit more receptive than I found at the legislature um, to comment. And I think they take their duty to create safe and efficient buildings very seriously. And so um, I think it's always important to remind them of that as well, that, you know, they, they are kind of here serving us as citizens to make sure that our buildings are as safe as, and efficient as possible. And so they do take that seriously for what it's worth. Will that be at the Capitol building too? The In August, August. 10th hearing is a portion of it's conducted virtually, which is how I'll be participating. And a portion of it is conducted at the a building called the Heber Wells building, which is in downtown Salt Lake City. Um, I believe it's it's just east of State Street on 300 South. I don't know the exact address. That is listed in our toolkit, which is right now. <laughs> and, uh, so it's gonna, yeah, the Heber Wells building, that's gonna be at 160 East, e excuse me, 160 East and 300 South. So yeah, right, right smack dab in the downtown of Salt Lake there. Um, and yes, yeah, I was going to get to that. Uh, like Thomas is saying, um, these are not uh, legislators. And these are Uniform Building Code Commission folks. So they are more, um, you can almost think of them as like building scientists or building experts as opposed to like politicians in a way. And that is open to the public then too, right? It is, yeah. There's an yeah. Okay. And, uh, and this built this meeting um, is specifically for public comment. So they are expecting public comment to come in. Um, and it, you know, they they do have some, they're never closed, but they do have some um other meetings that have happened in the past over the spring and summer that have been a lot more um negotiating and and not a, a lot more time for public comment, but this one will. And they want to hear from people, right? Like they, nobody likes making decisions based on just what they think is right. Or maybe some people do, but these guys don't. Um, and they definitely want to hear from us. So I'm excited that this group is getting together and, and making all their voices heard and getting together our thoughts. So this is exciting. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited that everyone's here. And um, something that we could do as well, um, I know we are running out of time and I, I know everyone probably wanted to share their thoughts and experiences and their public comments but um if everyone's comfortable with it maybe we could shoot a follow-up email just with all of us in it and we could workshop our ideas and our public comments for anybody who's looking to make a public comment and um as i said before i'm an open book um feel free to approach me whenever you'd like and whenever you can um yeah yeah maybe we could just kind of share our comments that way over an email chain just to respect everybody's time of it being uh 658 here 659 even um so yeah not to 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 kind of end things on an abrupt note here but yeah let's all be in touch i just want to tell everyone about a couple events that are coming up really quick just because i know you folks are all engaged and um let me just i'm just going to share my screen just to kind of show some of the visuals on that oh no it's right here well, I've already got it up. My God, uh, yeah. So a couple upcoming events. We've got it all here um, for Heal. If you just go to healutah.org/events, you'll find both of these events. So um, coming up, the fourteenth, August fourteenth, Sunday, August fourteenth, in Liberty Park, we're doing a really cool event. If you see these uh, these these posters back here, so a couple of local artists made um, these paint by number posters for our campaign to help um, ensure air quality on uh, air quality controls on coal emitting coal burning fire plants down in southern Utah. So we're trying to get air quality controls employed on our coal fire power plants down in southern Utah. And we're kind of be um, giving a lot of public comment in the upcoming couple couple months here. So we're making these big uh, these big banners, these big banners and you can you can paint them all like that. It's just gonna be paint by numbers. They're gonna have like big slogans on there like clean up our air, blah blah blah. So you make these really high quality fabric uh, um, 
protest signs that we're going to provide all the materials for and you're, we're going to hear from a couple speakers there in the park on Liberty Park. Um, and then on August 17th, we're going to have a community community advocacy hike. Um, our community outreach director is going to be leading a hike and talking about interim sessions and how you can affect change up on the hill, even not during the legislative session. So um, be sure to attend those. And then Eliza, if you want to talk about to Utah's events. Yeah, so we have a couple events coming up um, on August 9th. We have Twin Peaks Tuesdays. So this actually happens every other Tuesday. It's a hike up Twin Peaks with um, our development director leads it, but it's just kind of a community event. folks to just uh, get outside together. Um, and then on August 18th, um, we'll be having our bikes and brews. This happens, I think monthly, just started. So it either happens every two weeks or monthly, but the next one is on August 18th and that'll start and end at Level Crossing Brewing. But um, basically you'll meet at Level Crossing. Um, I'll meet in the parking lot, do a bike tour around the city um, with our community community um, advocacy team, and then you'll end at Level Crossing for a beverage of your choice after it. Um, so those you can RSVP to at otutah.org slash events. Um, and yeah, we'll see you guys there. Really, thank you all for coming out tonight and um, please share your public comment. We would love to, um, you know, see them beforehand and, and be able to get ideas from each other. So. Thank you all for joining us. Yeah, we'll, we'll shoot out that follow-up kind of brainstorming email chain to everyone. And feel free to, in that email chain, just let us know if you want to opt out, you want to be part of it. But I want to kind of work on all this together over an email. So, um, yeah, I'm going to respect everybody's time. It is uh, 7.02, so we're going to go ahead and end this. Thanks, everyone, so much for joining, and we'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. All right, thank you. Nice yeah, meeting, right. everyone. Thanks. Thank you, folks.